decision to invest in this as compassion investors. Please, another round of applause for Dewdrops. And the Dewdrop is waiting for your raindrops. Real rain, like thunderstorm, you know, like release the rain so that it is able to bring forth many, many, many more harvests and happy seasons for not just the Anekes, but for all of their partners, families, and the community at large. I always love to think that it's much more the in-reach than the outreach. Hmm? What we, in ourselves, are able to commit to and follow through. Having watched that documentary, I believe we are ready, set to go with this next introduction of our very distinguished chairperson. And like I said earlier on, we had celebrated and recognized and respectfully acknowledged that he's not here alone. He's here with his wife, um, Mrs. Felicia Nebo. But now we invite the Prof, a very distinguished and honorable Minister of Power, Professor Chinedu Nebo, as he gives us some words that embrace us into this community of empowered positive change. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I really thank God for this opportunity to come and share this moment with all who cared enough to come and be part of this. One thing about autism is if we look at it strictly from a scientific point of view, it is just one click away from genius. Just one tiny flip of our creation could have made the same person who is bedeviled with this issue of autism a genius. But be that as it may, we thank God that at last this is beginning to receive attention in Nigeria. I have a little text here written, so in order to be brief, I'll read it. I'm here today as a person who has encountered the challenges of autism. Yes, I do have a grandson whom I love very dearly on the autism spectrum. And frankly speaking, I never really took to mind what autism was in a very personalized manner until I experienced it firsthand with my grandson. I must confess to you, as well as everyone out there, that although my grandson, Abba by name, is such a precious darling to my family, understanding and dealing with the challenges of caring for him it's a huge task and could be very emotional, especially for his mother. Because these children require almost 24-7 attention. You can't take your eyes away from them. I've come to understand that every individual with autism is unique in their own way. God doesn't make mistakes. Some things do happen. And we ask ourselves, what could be responsible for this? The most important thing we need to do and know is to see an opportunity in every difficulty we have to encounter. And I believe that God allows us to experience certain things in life so that we become more compassionate, more caring, more dutiful in our caregiving and in our being real human beings, as our sister Daya would say, our humanity 
expressed in whatever community we find ourselves. I can only imagine the difficulties faced by the families, some who are seated here, some out there, and even more importantly, the low-income earning families out there who do not have the sufficient means to cater for the child with autism, and yet have, have to manage their time in working long hours just to put food on their table. One thing is different about our generation. I can say that in spite of the fact that whatever data we have tells us that autism doubles every five years, there must be not just metabolic reasons for that, there might also be things that have, we have come to live with in our society that predisposes families to this very um, difficult situation. But think about generations before this one. Children who were battered and beaten because their parents felt they were very stubborn. They never knew they couldn't help themselves. And these children were tortured. Every day they received a beating of their life for things they couldn't control. And that is why it is so critical that this awareness is spread across the entire nation. So that even in the parts of the country where people are not so enlightened, they need to realize that there are children who are born different. It's not that they are stubborn. My people will say, you know, this child doesn't have ears. And uh, Kofi talked about his mother being a very good tennis player. My mother was a better one. I think she was lucky she didn't have an autistic child because she would have killed him ten times before his death. Rugged disciplinarian. So the good thing is that is coming out in the open. And what the cadet academy is trying to do is not only to make this awareness part of our fabric of information, but also to profile ways and means of dealing with the situation, multiplying and replicating systems, knowledge, experts, and expertise needed to deal with this situation. And so I'm glad to see what is happening today. I see a representation of hope by what Mrs. Lola Aneke and her team are doing as an organization. I really applaud this dream and venture. We need people like this. Not because they have come face to face with autism, but because they care enough. And because they feel that the society needs to benefit substantially from the knowledge they have acquired. Not only does she have the expertise, having done her training and gathered experience in special education from the United States, she had the option of staying back there to practice and make good money for herself. After all, special education is one of the high paying jobs in the United States of America today. But instead, she chose to return home and start up something that would benefit not, not only a few families, but so many families and change many lives for good in Nigeria. And she needs her encouragement. What is more striking is that she does not, as she does what she does, with so much passion, when she does not even have anybody with autism 
in her immediate family. I don't think anybody can walk or encounter any real meaningful thing, goal, ambition in life without passion. And if we are not passionate about the things we are doing, we will probably not bring out our best. I believe that it is only right that we all should encourage this wonderful and good effort that we are seeing today. That is the reason that my very dear friend, Professor Sajia Adelaja and I have decided to support the Cadet Academy. I thank God for Professor Soji that brought my family in contact with their neckers. And I think it's for very good reasons. When we see something that is worth doing, we give our hearts to it. Especially when it comes to deal with children. From experience, some of the best professionals with regard especially to music having people with autism. We had one in my church at All Saints Church for many, many years was the organist. And it was like music was in his DNA. He was unrivaled. Not even the professor of men of uh, music in the church could compete with this young man was autistic, couldn't communicate with anybody, anyhow, anytime, anywhere, no. But if you put him on an organ or piano, whether it is angels, he's communicating or God, I think it's so obvious that he is at home anytime. And if we did not give such people an opportunity, Perhaps if he didn't have the kind of parents who saw early enough, they didn't really initially know what he was passing through, but they say, hey, he likes music. Give him the best opportunity. We need such environment. The academy is reaching out to alleviate the sufferings of so many people. But we have a concern here. Is education supposed to be only for the rich, the wealthy, those who can afford it? A few years ago, there was a debate. And um, I happened to be vice chancellor of the University of Nigeria and Sukkot then. And the question was, if people did what some of us we are proposing, cost-sharing formula, we are parents, local government, state government, federal government will all be part of paying the school fees of undergraduates. They said, well, many young people are being are going to be marginalized if parents had to pay. And my argument or thesis was that most of those have already been marginalized at birth. By the time they are six years old, they have no good schools to attend. And these are potential geniuses. Because they didn't go to good schools, they won't pass common entrance examinations to go to good secondary schools. And because they didn't go to good secondary schools, they will not end up in universities. Now think of autistic children. If child A, normal, had maybe X amount of Naira needed to pay this child's school fees, Child B who is autistic might require five or six X 
in order to put this child through and make this child realize his or her potential. So what the Cadet Academy is trying to do is to ensure that no child is left behind. That all children have an opportunity to become whatever God had endowed them with. And I think it's very critical that all of us who can afford to be part of this vision should identify with it. Some of us are going to give a one-time gift. But I think that's not enough. We can give a one-time gift and then we can program ourselves on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, on a timely basis to contribute, to make sure, or even identify the children that we might sponsor to make sure that good results are met at the end of the road. The journey, as our sister said, not a race, but a journey. In order to permit this vision to take place, we have to raise something like 100 million naira for the Cadet Academy to take off. We are making our donations, and um, we are not at liberty to say what we are giving. We have to be very careful, we are public officials, but we continue to support the Cadet Academy by the grace of God. And this is to permit this to happen. And we have to collect the balance from individuals. Some of us have made, some of us are making, and we are looking for like-minded people like you. Corporations, or those we know, 